Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Well, hello, family. Hello, family. This is your pastor, R.C. Blakes Jr., and I am always excited to be able to share with you. I'm coming to you today all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. First time uh, in Cape Town, first time this trip on the continent. And uh, what a blessing it has been to, to be here to meet uh, people I've never met before and to discover that so many people here consider me to be their family. Some even call me their their papa, their spiritual father. What a blessing that is. But I wanted today to share with you out of the word of God something that really was stirred in me um, actually uh, last night as I slept. I, I had a, a dream, very, very specific dream, troubling dream. And um, in this dream, um, it depicted me in being in a lot of trouble. Man, I was, in, I was in some major, major trouble. I was in trouble legally. Um, I was in trouble relative to public opinion because I did something that went against my values, went against my morals, but it was something that I was influenced to do by others that I was um, in, I guess, a group with. They did it, and so I, I found myself doing it, and immediately uh, regretting it after I had done it. But they influenced me to do something that I knew I should not do. Even though they influenced me to take the action, I still had to pay the consequence. And as I woke up, I was disturbed by that dream. I was so glad to realize that it was a dream because I was very, very disappointed in myself. And then Holy Spirit said to me, well, this dream really was not just about you. It's really for everybody. It's a warning to everybody. But more specifically, this dream was to awaken in me the subject matter of our discussion, living under the influence because there are so many of us that are under the influence of others. And the thing we fail to understand is that people can influence you. You must take your own personal action and you must pay your own personal price. When we look at the body of Christ today, what do we see? We see people, we see leaders even that are under the influence. I see leaders that are caving relative to uh, what God's word clearly says. What God's word says about um, human sexuality. What God's word says about how those uh, in, in political leadership should manage their office, their influence, and how they should uh, take care of the people. Uh, we are under the influence of all kinds of pressures, and we're failing. We're failing the standards of God. We're failing. We're failing the will of God because we're under the influence. And even you sitting there right now in your personal life, you're under the influence. And let me give it, let me put it where all of us or most of us or many of us can catch it. You know, there, there are no human beings on the planet that we love more 
than we love our children. And sometimes your children grow up and your children grow astray. And rather than um, wisely and lovingly holding them to the standard, many times we cave relative to what our values really are. And we give in to our children rather than steering our children back to the path. Because whereas we once influenced them, now it's almost as though the roles have reversed. Now they're influencing us, many times in directions that are not righteous. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 through 9, it says, Ye did run well, who did hinder you? that ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion or influence cometh not of him that calleth you. You are not influenced by God to go in this direction. And then he says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What does that mean? You put a little yeast. I've spent quite a lot of time in, in Israel and Jerusalem specifically. And, um, you know, you can't put any yeast, no measure of yeast can go into what is considered unleavened bread. If there's just a pinch of yeast in it, it is no longer unleavened. Well, this speaks to the impact of just a little negative influence. What a little negative influence, what a little ungodly, unrighteous influence can have on our lives. Now, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not as fanatical as a lot of people are. Some people can't go to movies where, you know, people are not just speaking in tongues or some people feel like they can't even hear music, you know, without demons taking over their environment and all of that. I'm not that fanatical, but I'm also understanding of their position. Because you start letting, you know, many times little, little things in unawares. And before you know it, that little leaven has influenced the whole lump. And you become inundated. It starts off with a movie, then it moves into pornography, then it moves into uh, prostitution or, you know, participating in it, purchasing. Then it moves into, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Because just a little influence can go a long ways. And there are many of you that are watching me now who are living under the influence. You're living under the influence of your friends. You're living under the influence of uh, religious people who are not necessarily saved and don't necessarily love God. They, they name the name of Christ but they do not honor him. With their lips they ascend to him, but their hearts are far away from him. I was watching something here on television last night when we arrived here in Cape Town, and it, it, it depicted, um, was a study being done. I didn't see the whole thing. I just caught this glimpse, and I guess Holy Spirit was giving me this illustration prior to going to bed for this very message, but it was an illustration of how easily the general public is influenced. And it showed just a random man, a random man that took um, one of the, 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 the lint rollers, you know, with the little sticky things on it, and he stood at the entrance of what looked like an office building or a mall. And he, he just as the people would come to the door, he would just stretch his arms out without saying anything, and, and they stopped in front of him, and they stretched their arms out. They didn't see a, a identification badge. They didn't ask him who he was, and he started rolling the, the lint thing over him, and then one by one, he would tell them to proceed, and every person behind the other lined up for this man to run this lint roller over, the, over them without ever asking him who he was or why was he doing this. I think this is a major problem in our culture today. We have produced group thinkers. Being here in South Africa and learning some of the history of um, Mr. Mandela and um you know, those that surrounded him in leadership to 
uh, break the backbone of apartheid. These people had to have opinions that were not popular and not convenient. These people were not influenced by the majority or by the but by those in power, should I say, but rather they became the influencers of those who were in power. But when we look at our country, the United States of America, where are our John Lewis's now? Where are our Nelson Mandela's? Where are our Martin Luther King's? I'll say this to you. I think we have to understand this it's not necessarily going to be indivi an individual. Let me put it that way. It is going to be a movement of individuals. Now, I know that we've written off uh, our uh, millennials and whatever the next group is behind them, and we say, oh, they're difficult, uh, they're hard-headed, um, they have their own mind, not understanding that um, this is not a bad thing. It is a bad thing when they take that stubbornness and they go in directions that are removed from the foundations of their faith and, and family and sexuality and so forth and so on. But God will bring them back to that. But my generation, when you think about my generation, uh, my generation is the generation that just kind of fell into the group thinking. And um, we just became those that were influenced by whatever was convenient, whatever was popular. Um, now, the question that arose in my spirit when I woke up this morning and I thought about this message under the influence why are we influenced as a people? And when I say as a people, I mean a, a world. One dear heart reached out to me from Europe and she said to me, she said, R.C. Blakes, please understand that uh, your messages to the sisters are for white people, Europeans like me, and I had to write her back and say to her, whenever I reference the sisters, I am not speaking to just black women. I am speaking to women worldwide. Because when we get through with all of this other stuff, we, when you boil it all down, we are part of one race, and that's the human race. Uh, there may be some differences between our experiences, but primarily and basically and mostly we go through the same things. But when we deal with humankind, why are we so easily influenced? When God put within all of us the ability to lead, the ability to influence, and the majority of us choose to be influenced choose to be led. Not that there's anything wrong with being influenced, but there's absolutely something wrong when you are only influenced and you are never influencing. And especially when you are influenced by the wrong influences or the wrong influencers. Why are we influenced so easily? Letter A, letter a we are influenced because Many of us have relationships many times where there is unquestioned trust. In other words, you know the person and you watch this, substitute their judgment for yours. You know what you believe, but you, you, you discard of what you believe and you replace it with what they say. Now, that's not a bad thing in certain relationships. That's not a bad thing many times in the parental relationship. Not all of the time, because parents don't always know best. But all things being equal, parents that love you and parents whose lives have fruit hanging on the limb and parents who've accomplished, uh, you know, things in life, if if they say to you, I wouldn't do it this way, I would do it that way, you should probably consider rethinking your way because your way is not proven yet. 
and your parents have only the interest of what? All things being equal, your success. They don't need anything from you. They don't want anything from you. You're going to find very few relationships in life where people don't need or want anything from you. They just want your best. But in general, we cannot go through life having unquestioned trust in anybody. I'm a, I'm a pastor and a leader of many, many people, many, 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 many people. Quite often folks say, well, how many? I don't know. My father's spiritual father, Dr. F.H. Dunn, said, we don't count people, we make people count. But I'm the leader of many, many, an army of people. And I teach everyone that listens to me, question everything I say. Don't trust, don't just blindly trust me. You don't know if I'm on medication. Come on now. You, you don't know if, 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 I, <laughs> if I had a drink or two that went to my head and I'm speaking out of, you know, unclear reasoning or logic. Just because you know a person and, and, and you know, you have respect for them does not always mean you should substitute your judgment for theirs. This is what happened um, with Adam in the garden with his wife Eve. He, he fell from his place of dominion because he had an unquestioned trust in his wife's judgment. Forgot about what God told him to do. Forgot about what his responsibility was. And he exercised an unquestioned trust in his wife, and it cost he and her. In Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 6, it says, And when the woman saw that the tree, and when you read the full context, Satan has beguiled the woman, deceived her, and gotten her to, taste of the fruit that God said, don't touch. And the Bible says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband. This is the kind of influence a woman has over a husband. She did eat and gave also, unto, uh, gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. He did not question her judgment. He did not question her judgment. Though God told him personally, do not touch this tree, lest you should surely die. He did not question her judgment. And almost like in a robotic rhythm, just conceded to what Eve asked him to do. Now, we can't blame Eve because God didn't talk to Eve. Uh, you know, I know a lot of times we like to go there. Well, you know, Eve messed the whole thing. Sometimes I've said it in in jest. Um, is that the way you say it? Just a jest. I'm trying to expand my vocabulary. You all that know, you know, you can appreciate that. But saying it jokingly, you know, Eve messed this whole thing up. The reality is Adam messed this whole thing up because God gave him the commandment. And Adam should have trusted no one and no thing above what God told him to do. You know, unquestioned, we, we fi find ourselves falling under the influence because we have this unquestioned trust for people. Abraham had that kind of trust for his wife, Sarah, when God promised them a child and Sarah was old and Abram was old and nothing was happening and Sarah comes and offers to Abram, his, her young maid, to sleep with to have a child. And Abram submits to that, and she bears the son by the name of Ishmael, but God says he's not the, he's not the one, I promised you. I'll bless him, but he's not, he's not the one I promised you. And then Sarah gets pregnant like God said. And now Sarah wants to put the woman out and the child out. Well, Abram brought that on himself because he should have never put his trust in Sarah's words. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalms 118, 8 and 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in 
in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. So we find ourselves falling under the influence when we have this unquestioned trust for, for people. And then they prove to be human, like people always do. You see, people are going to let you down either intentionally or by mistake. But at some point, people are going to prove to be human. And so no one should go without being questioned. Uh, letter B, we, we find ourselves under the influence many times as, as people because of group momentum. In other words, we are caught up in the, mo the momentum of the culture, and the momentum of the culture influences us. You know, there are things that I say um, from a fashion position. I say, oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. Oh, my God, I can't believe they like this. I can't believe they spend that kind of money on this. And lo and behold, six months, a year, two years go down the road, and there I am wearing the same thing that everybody else is wearing to a certain extent. There's only so far I'm going, and I'm not going any further, you know. And and it's just, you know, it's it's just, um, it's a part of human nature that we many times get caught up in group momentum. We are caught up in the momentum of the culture many times to um, a horrific end. You, you know, uh, I, I don't mean to just continue talking about sexuality, but I mean, it, it's, you know, people are adopting sexual lifestyles and, and going, just doing the most with it because it's become popular. I'm almost wondering, to be quite honest with you, if we're going to have to start in the United States of America, at least, you know, a, a, a heterosexual equality movement. <laughs> and I know that that, that that moves some of you the wrong way, but uh, it's the truth. You know, it's, it's like other lifestyles, sexual lifestyles have become so popular now. It's almost like, you know, can I find just... Uh, a run-of-the-mill heterosexual anymore, you know, because everybody's just kind of like caught up in the momentum of the group, and the whole world is kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, we're under the influence because of group momentum. We, we no longer have a personal standard, or should I say, uh, very few of us carry yet a personal standard or a divine commitment to God's way of doing things, most of us now are influenced by group momentum. If the majority are doing it, I'm rolling with the majority. This is why you can run into a theater and you can scream fire, 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 and start running and everybody, or at least most, if not everybody, will run out behind you. It's because psychologically, it's almost like we're built with a, with a herd mentality that whichever direction the momentum of the herd is going in, that's the way I'm running. In Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, we see a very real depiction of this. Uh, when the spies went over to check out the promised land and uh, they found, you know, 12 spies went over they found giants there. They found grapes there. But 10 of the spies came back saying, oh, we can't do it. No, they came back, you know, bringing a report to a nation. Some said could number as many as 3 million Hebrews. And 10 men come back saying, we can't do it. Two said, we can do it. And the, the negative words of the 10 influenced 3 million people. And the Bible says in Numbers 14, 1 and 2, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? They, they, they had 
been influenced by 10 negative voices. And the group went in the direction of the 10. Now, why, why are we, why are we so given to being under the influence? Let us see. You're always, we are always influenced by the people we share life with. In other words, I can't let you just be in my space every day and not understand that somehow whatever's in you is going to rub off on me. I can't run with, with pimps and, and, and uh, scammers and, and not think that somehow these negative people are not going to have a negative influence on me. This is the main part of the being equally yoked. The, the question rises when you look at the full context of that verse, be not unequally yoked. What fellowship, what do you have in common? What do the righteous have in common with those that worship Baal? 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. I cannot be with negative people and not be negatively impacted or influenced. You are always influenced by the people you share life with. This is why you cannot be random with the people you allow to occupy your space. Uh, Proverbs 22, 24 and 25 says, make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways, and get a snare to thy soul. And then letter D, why are we so easily brought under the influence? Letter D, our lust for acceptance. We, we just want to be accepted. So we give in to stuff that we know better than. We don't, we don't recognize the fact that we're already accepted in the beloved by the only one that matters. And so what happens is we give in to people who do not matter because we feel like we need their acceptance. And it becomes a lust for acceptance. And this lust for acceptance divorces us from our own judgment and our own discernment while making us slaves to the approval of other people. That's where some of you are now. You, you so desire the approval of other people that you've become a slave to their acceptance. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, it says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away, influenced with divers or many kinds of lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So these are four reasons why uh, we find ourselves as human beings under the influence of one another, even when we're, you know, not um, benefited or profited by one another's influence. Now, let's move to the last leg or the second part of this teaching. Under the influence. How do we, if we wake up and we say, well, you know, um, I have been influenced. I am presently being influenced by the wrong people. Um, I do relate to some of those, those reasons you, you outlined just now. But how do I rectify this? How do I, how do I right the ship? The ship is upside down. It's topsy-turvy. 
how do I write the ship? How do I make things kosher? Well, I think number one, and this comes from personal experience because I too have been, uh, though I've been for most of my life, um, a person that has been very comfortable with um, walking alone and making my own decisions, calling my own shots. And a lot of that is what got me into a whole lot of the problems I've experienced in life. But I thank God that he made me in such a way that I've never felt a, a strong desire to have to necessarily fit in. But I have to admit that there, there were occasions where I did follow and I was influenced, um, especially when it came down to relationships that I did not feel I needed to question. Sometimes I, I gave too much trust, uh, put too much confidence in what I considered to be trusted voices. And so my life did get out of, out of sorts. And the first thing that I've, I had to do, and even today in terms of maintenance, still have to do, because the world is constantly striving to influence us. The world is constantly striving to uh, alter my message, put pressure on me to make me stop saying certain things and stop dealing with certain stuff. And, and I still have to come back to this main point that I'm getting ready to give you, number one. And that is you ha you're, you're going to have to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. If, if you're sincerely tired of being under the influence of um, toxic culture, uh, unqualified others, you are going to have to intentionally come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the thing about the Holy Spirit versus the world. The world forces itself onto you relative to dominating you, to influence you, to twist your arm, to make you go in a certain direction. The world forces you into that. Holy Spirit is not going to force you. I love the way they taught us back in the, uh, the 80s. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He is not going to force himself on anyone. If Holy Spirit, if he is going to uh, come into your life and steer and direct your life, you're going to have to surrender and submit to him. You see, to be filled with the Holy Spirit means to come under his influence intentionally and willingly. But you're going to have to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. When, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit activated in your life, uh, he gives you the ability to recognize and to resist the voices of the world that would influence you in directions that go away from God. You know, when you think about um, soul ties, what is a soul tie? It is being under the influence of a demonic entity, power, um, an unrighteous other. How do we overcome that? We surrender, submit to the Holy Spirit, and then Holy Spirit gives us the power to rise up and to say no where we otherwise would have caved, where we lost our ability to have uh, a yay or a nay. We were just kind of managed and manipulated. When, when you surrender to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is the one that will rise up in you and give you the power to say no to those desires. So if you're going to if you're going to come from under the influence of the world and toxic and unrighteous others, 
you're going to have to, as you as you come from under that influence, you're going to have to submit to the influence of the Holy Spirit. It's like the man that uh, cast out the demons, swept the house clean. Well, if you know you don't, if you don't fill the house with the Holy Spirit, what happens is those demons come back and they discover that the house is clean and empty, and it goes back and it brings even more demons back. In other words, the next round of, of, of toxic influence becomes worse than the first unless you fill that void, that empty place with, Holy, with the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verses 13 and 14, it says this, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God, in other words, are influenced or led by the Holy Spirit. I like the way uh, one portion of scripture says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what is the implication there? That you are under the influence of the Holy Spirit like, like a drunkard would be under the influence of alcohol. You take on a new behavior. You have a new worldview. <laughs> you have a new perspective because you are now under the influence of holy spirit if you want to if you want to come from under the influences of the world you must get under the influence of the holy spirit submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you i love that you see i can resist the the, the temptations of the world's influences not because I'm stronger or better than you, but because I'm not relying on me. I rely on him. Is that right? And then listen to what the Bible says in Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. It says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. We must be under the influence of the Holy Spirit and not man's influence. I don't care what men think. Come on now. And I don't say that arrogantly. I don't say that as a lone ranger. I know I need people and relationships. And, you know, I have, I have a pastor. I have mentors that I, I adhere to and listen to men that uh, have gone further and done it longer, um, you know, that speak into my life. I'm not speaking as, as some loose cannon out here, but in general, I don't care what people think, what no general populace thinks. Come on now, I, I got to obey God rather than men. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm not trying to think about, well, what, are, what, what do the people want me to do? Come on now, I'm surrendering and submitting myself to the influence of Holy Spirit. And so should you. If you want to live a life that comes from under the influences, the toxic and demonic influences of the world, you must simultaneously, as you move, as you make a uh, a free will decision to come from under the, the influences of the world, you must simultaneously make a choice to come and to submit to the Holy Spirit, and he will cover you. Now, number two, if you're going to break this stronghold of being influenced by the toxic cultures of the world, the toxic philosophies, and beliefs of the world, not only must you come under the influence of the Holy Spirit, but number two, you're going to have to remember that you are an ordained influencer. You are, you are, not, you are not created to be um, guided around like a puppet. That's not why God made you. 
Go back to Genesis and check out the original reason God made you. God made man, when I say man, I'm speaking of male and female, to walk in dominion, to take orders from him. Come on now, you were really, you and I were really never created in the original, um, in the original ideal version of mankind, of Adam before the fall. We were not created to take orders from one another. You know, when you see how God told them to dominate this, dominate that, dominate that, that. he never said to Adam, dominate Eve. He never said to Eve, dominate Adam. Now, after the fall, God said, as a result of the curse, Eve, Adam's going to constantly seek to rule over you. That's going to be a, that was a, that was a punishment for the sin. And then God said to Adam, because of this, Eve's going to constantly seek to usurp your authority. Why would these be punishments? It's because it was never part of the natural order of mankind. And when we get redeemed, I don't mean to go off track here and we come into relationships from a redeemed in Christ perspective. We then begin to understand that, you know, as a husband, I was never, I'm not in order trying to dominate my wife. She's not in order trying to dominate me. We have to flow together that we might dominate a walk in dominion, should I say, in the world, in the earth. So if you're going to come to a place where you are no longer influenced by the world, you're going to have to also remember you are an ordained influencer. An influencer is not just a person that has a million followers on Instagram. An influencer is not just a person that gets brand deals. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. The young folk call me, <clears throat> the young folk call me an influencer. I never knew I was an influencer. I thought I was just a preacher that had a message. And I was just using social media platforms to get it out. And the young folks said, no, you're an influencer. I said, okay, praise. I said, I receive in Jesus' name. And I started just realizing people was reach, people reach out to me every day for brands. They want me to promote this and promote that. And I said, I, I am an influencer. But the only reason I'm an influencer is because I knew I was to be an influencer before I even knew what an influencer was. I'm a kingdom influencer. I wasn't put in the world to be a follower. I'm put in the world to be a leader. Come on, somebody. So I use my message and I use my gift. I use my grace. I use my swag, if you will, to influence those that are in the kingdom of darkness to come out of darkness into this marvelous light. That's why he put me in the, in the world. He didn't put me in the world to be around here running behind the world, its systems that are all failing and going to hell in a handbasket. You got to remember you are an ordained influencer. You got to stop being a follower. There are many of you who, who have become too comfortable being followers. You follow your friends. You follow your people on the job. You, you follow uh, people in the church that's not really even connected to the, to the men and women of God or to the ministry. You follow people in politics when you don't even really understand the platform. You, you're voting for stuff that's even working against your own interests. You're campaigning for candidates that don't even like you. You were, you were never ordained. To be a follower like you are. You, you are an ordained influencer. Listen to what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 and 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. You are always designed to be the head and not the tail. Glory to God. People say, you know, when, when I go to the movies, uh, I typically like to sit you know, about the third row off of the screen. I don't have a problem sitting on the first row, really. Everybody wants to go way to the back up top in the middle. I want to get out, you know, I, I want to get somewhere between rows one to three. And I really want the first seat on whatever row that is. 
I don't know. It's just something in my mind that says you you you're supposed to be at the front of this deal. Mm -mm. If fire break out, I ain't supposed to be back there behind y'all. I'm supposed to be out here. I'm supposed to be leading this. That's just the way I'm. You know. See, I'm I'm just uh, you know. But that's what that's the dominion nature in me. When you when you when you tap into your dominion nature, you're 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 not going to be as comfortable being a follower as you've been. And I know, I know your self-esteem needs work, and I know you've gone through trauma, and I know you've not had the best of parenting and all of that. You got work you got to do, and I get that. But I'm saying this not in judgment of you. I'm saying this to awaken you. You got to stop following uh, people who don't know where they're going. You got to stop letting blind people proofread your vision. And you got to learn to listen to Holy Spirit. Assume the position of leader. Step out front. You say, I look out front. I don't see nobody in front of me. I'm not comfortable with that. Holy Spirit is always there. And listen to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. You are the salt of the earth. You quietly, silently influence the culture. You see, I'm salt out here in this world. I just show up speaking truth in real love. That's all I do. I don't come with judgment. I don't wear my I don't wear cloaks of religion, you know. A lot of times people don't even know I'm a preacher. It's like they listen to me for weeks and months sometimes, and then they finally, voila, they realize, oh, he's a, he's a preacher. I'm not even a Christian. Why am I listening to him? And then they write me, they say, you know, I'm not even a Christian. I don't even believe in God, but I don't know this. I just love it's because I'm sold out here. I make things better. I influence things for the better. Glory to God. I believe one of my assignments in these days is to make the church taste better to the world. The world has lost its, its, um, its appetite for the church to a large extent. And I believe me and many others, God is raising up mostly younger people. He's raising up to put some salt on the church to make the church mm, taste better. And then watch this, number three, and I'm out of here. If you're going to abandon, you know, your mindset of being under the influence of the world and others, you're going to have to, number one, we said you're going to have to come under the influence of Holy Spirit. Number two, we said you're going to have to remember that you are an ordained influencer. And then number three, you're going to have to realize this. As you walk and move throughout the earth, there is but one you must please. Stop trying to make everybody happy. You can't be the influencer you're ordained to be trying to make everybody happy. Stop asking people what they want when it comes down to something God's already told you. Now that's a lesson right there for leaders. Stop asking people what, what do they want when it boils down to something God's already told you. It's not a question of what they want. It's about what God told you. And anybody that can't rock with you based on what God told you is not designed to go into your future anyway. But if you're going to come from under the influence and get under the influence of God, coming from under the influence of the world and the culture and getting under the influence of God, you're going to have to remember this. There is but one you must please. It's nice if you all approve. It's a blessing if you approve. I love it. I love being accepted. I love being celebrated. I do, I do, I do. I was in, I was in uh, the mall in Johannesburg just sitting and waiting for Lisa and a dear heart. I mean, I'm on the other side of the world and a dear heart runs up to me and she says, are you R.C. Blakes? And I said, I most certainly am. And it was a blessing to be loved by 
a woman on the other side of the world and to be revered and to be appreciated and to be esteemed. That was a blessing. But you know what? If I never get that, it's a blessing to see so many of you hitting my inbox, hitting my DMs and hitting my uh, social media platforms and saying, you know, I'm here. We'd love to see you. We'd love to. It's a blessing. But if I don't have any of that, there's but one that I must please. And that is God. So if it comes down to pleasing you or pleasing him, there's no question. There's no competition between you and God. God is in a category all by himself. He must be obeyed. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, it says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If you're going to really come from under the influence, you're going to have to realize you got to please God, and it's simple as that. In your life, you're going to have to please God. And in pleasing God, you're going to upset some people, but they're just going to have to be upset. You'll be all right, because if God be for us, who can be against us? And then listen to what Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So, are you under the influence? If you are, it's time for you to get from under the influence of the world, to come under the influence of Holy Spirit, and to be the ordained influencer in the world that God has called you to be by knowing that He and He alone, He's the only one that must be pleased. I pray that you've gotten something out of my little discussion with you today. May I pray for you? Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. And my prayer, dear God, is that you will cause this word to resonate, to set up in their hearts and to shift the way they think about themselves and the world. And now, God, I call them kingdom influencers. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you're there and you're saying, well, pastor, I want to be saved. I want to join New Home Church. I want to connect with the cyber church community. There's an email address either on the screen, depending on what pl platform you're watching. It's either on the screen or it's in the description. You can email us and someone will respond to you relative to whatever choice you're, you're trying to make. If you, you want to accept Christ and you need someone to pray with you, or you want to join New Home Church, you need someone to guide you, or you want to connect with the cyber church community, reach out to us and someone will respond to you. Now today as we prepare to honor the Lord in our giving and with, our, with the Lord's tithe, please always remember this. When you hear me asking you to give, I am not asking you to give me one dime. I'm asking you to support the church that I am one of the pastors of, and that's the New Home Church. So if you're connected to me from all parts of the United States of America and other parts of the world, and you say, oh, this is my pastor. Well, pastors have churches, and the church that I have is New Home Church. And on a cyber level, it's Cyber Church Global, which we're still organizing. I haven't launched that site yet. So mostly people who are a part of the Cyber Church community participate on the social media platforms, which is fine for now. But I'm the pastor of New Home Church and Cyber Church Global. Cyber Church Global comes out of New Home Church. It's just a vision that God gave me for the way the world is set up now. But when I'm asking you to give or to tithe, I'm asking you to sow into New Home Church. If you're watching 
all of the apps, Givelify, Cash App, Text to Give, all of these means, the website, are ways you can give electronically from wherever you are in the country or the world. If they're not on the screen, again, you can go to the description and you can find the links that you can utilize to give into New Home Church. I want you to prepare the Lord's tithe, and I'm asking every person today that will sow the $56 seed. I'm believing God for you today as you sow that seed that God will show you something supernatural. That's what I'm believing God for. So get the Lord's tithe, get the seed prepared, and let's honor the Lord. Let's bless the Lord by blessing the Lord's house. The church is the foundation of everything that I do. Make certain that you take care of New Home Church. Praise God. Now listen, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I thank God for you. I look forward to returning home back to the States and getting a chance to throw my, <laughs> I was getting ready to say throw my arms around everybody, but we're still not there yet. Throw my eyes around the whole congregation in, within the in-person experience. You all pray for Lisa and I as we journey to make our way back home. And just know that I love you. I love you. I love you. You're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. So guess what? We will see you at the top. God bless. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.